Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Oxford Online English. If you didn't know, my name is Carrie and I am going to be your teacher for the next however long. So I don't know how many people will show up to today's class as it was scheduled in quite late. However, we are going to just roll with it and um, see how the class goes. So uh, we have two new Oxford Online English members. So a very warm welcome to Nung and also a very warm welcome to Alhebisha. Alhebeshi. Alhebeshi. Welcome, very uh, a big welcome to both of you. And thank you for joining Oxford Online English. <laughs> Round of applause. Um, hello, Narayan from Bangladesh. Thank you for joining me today. Hello, Confidence from Nigeria. Hello, Nafad from Pakistan. How are you? Manuel, thank you for joining me today. How are you, Manuel? We missed you last time. I'm glad that you are here today. Welcome. Hello, Nipa. How are you? Thank you for being here. Yes, how are you, Nipa? I hope you're well. Shihab, hello. Hello, Shubham, hello. Inma from Spain, I guess. Hello, Robinson. Hello, Pukan. Hello, Risha. Hello, Shireen. Hello, Nurin. Hello, Sara. Hello, Kawa. Hello, The End from Bangladesh. I am very well, thank you. How are you? You are in the nick of time, Manuel. Hello, Delight. I am very well, thank you. How are you? Hello, Fabiola. Fabiola. Hello, Osman. Hello, Focus. Hello, Master. Hello, Kamakshi. Hello, everybody. Nipa, I am very well, thank you. I'm happy to be here as always. Hello, Domenico, how are you? Where are you in the world, Domenico? Are you in Ireland right now? Hello, Kashita. Hello, Kishan. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. If you didn't know, um, I am here every other Tuesday at UK 12 time. Um, but please check the schedule regularly because sometimes that can change. I know my stream was not scheduled in for today. That was my mistake. However, I have already scheduled in our next class, which is next Tuesday. So make sure you're here. Um, lessons, uh, at the end of the lesson, you'll be able to download the materials. I would highly recommend that if you are planning on doing the IELTS speaking exam. So we have to crack on because we have lots to do today. So we are going to do some IELTS speaking practice. So we are going to answer some general questions about speaking practice. We are going to discuss the format and the expectations of the IELTS speaking exam. You um, can, we are going to look at some common challenges that some students face. We are going to go through each part of the exam and during that process, there will be some practice activities for you to do. So IELTS speaking, that's what we are focusing on today. So let's get started. Have you ever taken the IELTS exam before or are you interested in taking it?
Oh, we have more people in chat. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Ma Wan. Hello, Saj. Hello, St. Jean. Thank you for being here. Julia. Hello, Julia. Thank you for being here. Jack Efron. Also, some regulars that I can see here in chat. Ah, it always gives me that lovely warm feeling. Oh, wow, Domenico, that's really cool. So how did the exam go? I'm surprised you're here then. I'm surprised you're here if you've already taken it. I would probably take a step back from learning English after all of the effort you've been putting in the last few years. <laughs> Okay, so Daisy is interested in taking the exam when she feels ready. Absolutely. Do you have any idea when that might be, Daisy? A lot of people are saying that they're interested. And Kashta is preparing for it. The end is interested. You're leaving in 18 days. Where are you going, Domenico? Okay, so uh, quite a few people are preparing for the IELTS exam. So that's Great. So why do we think that speaking is considered the most important language skill? Why is speaking considered the most important language skill? This is just your opinion, your own idea. Why do you think that is? Ashley Shen! No, it's not daunting. Oh, Daisy, definitely not this year because I'm busy with the renovation process of my house. Absolutely. Priorities. Am I right? <laughs> it's very difficult sometimes to squeeze in such a, a difficult task with a lot of preparation when you still have to do normal day-to-day -day life things. So I totally, totally um, understand Daisy but next year absolutely I mean it's already October so <laughs> Jack Efron because it's the global language that you must know okay because we have to be able to express you can be able to express yourself and communicate with others. Absolutely. Manuel, because we are human beings and we need to socialize with everyone. It's a problem talking with hand gestures, true. Hello, Russia. Okay, so communication, right? In any language that we're learning, it's incredibly important to be able to communicate our thoughts, our feelings and our opinions. So not only in the English language, but in any kind of language. So speaking is considered a very important skill because you need it to be able to survive uh, everyday situations. So because it is the most important language skill, how do you practice those skills? How do you practice your speaking skills? What do you do?
Wow! Domenico, congratulations! You're going to Mexico! Oh, I'm so jealous! You have your presentation of your research proposal before proceeding towards LA to work as a diver and collect more data at the same time. <gasps> wow, Domenico, that sounds amazing. Oh, I hope you'll be able to um, connect to the stream to let us all know how you're doing out there. Oh, Mexico. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Uh, Daisy, <laughs> Daisy gossips with her non-native speakers and native speakers. That's a very good technique <laughs> to practice <laughs> your speaking skills, Daisy. Fantastic. I like that. Kishan, you are in the right place right now. I'm sure that your English isn't extremely weak because you have been able to express your thoughts to me in chat. So today we're going to do some speaking practice, Kishan, so um, you can improve today. Nipa and Daisy are the same. Great. So how much time then do you dedicate to speaking practice, either per week, per day or per month? How much time do you dedicate to practicing your speaking every week, day, month? Because this is important. Nipa, sometimes I speak with myself in front of the mirror every night. Absolutely, Nipa. Every week for 15 minutes. So that's only 15 minutes over seven days. No, that can't be right. One to two hours maximum daily, the end. Okay, that is dedication. St. John, do you speak English every day? Yes, Daisy. Daisy spends more than one hour on practice speaking daily. Fantastic. Jack Efron, Efron has an obsession, learning phrases and idioms. Great. Do you say them out loud? One to two hours per day, 30 minutes per day. Six or seven hours a week, Manuel, fantastic. Kashita, I don't have a specific time, but when I get chance, I take advantage because I'm surrounded by native speakers. <gasps> Kashita, that is very, very interesting. So you are able to to speak to your friends or neighbors in English? Nipa, every single day, at least for one or two hours. Amazing. St. Jean only listens to English. That's all you hear. Well, that's great. Okay, and my last general question. What are some of your biggest challenges when speaking another language? Hello, Ayub. Thank you for joining us. Carrie, tell me, tell me the key of learning English very fast. Immersion. That's my key. There you are. You have my, <laughs> my best tip, immersion. So <laughs> I would recommend 
moving to America or England. No, 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 that's not a recommendation. That's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Um, immerse yourself in the language in your day-to-day -day life as much as possible. Do not speak in your native language at all. Do not even think in your native language. Uh, Nafar, I actually mentioned your name at the start of the stream. So don't be angry with me because that's not true. Nobody speaks English here. What shall I do? Well, you are using free resources online, which is a fantastic thing to do. I would also recommend reaching out to native speakers who might be interested in learning your native language and uh, you can try and do some kind of language exchange with them or reach out to other language English language learners from around the world and try to get some pen pals, social media pals. When I go out to buy groceries, it's weird. I did expect they would speak English all the time in the USA. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who are studying the IELTS exam, for those of you who have taken the IELTS exam, or for those of you who mm, know about the English uh, IELTS exam, why do students choose to take it? Why? Why do people choose to take the IELTS exam? What are their reasons? I think my last question, it's very important for you to identify, okay, it's very important for you to know your challenges when speaking, because that is the stuff that's the part of the language that you are going to have to practice seven days a week without fail. Okay, so why do people take the IELTS exam? Well, Margarita says because they want to get access to a university. They want to be able to attend a university in an English speaking country. Absolutely. Jack, to get a job abroad, very good. Nita, to get a job, fantastic. Patrice or Patrice, or, to improve their English knowledge for university and for possible future employers, great. Julia, from my perspective, it is the mandatory step if you want to go for your higher studies overseas. Yes. Job opportunities. Yes. They want to get a job or study in a foreign country. Absolutely. Kashita, to test their English level. Even if there's no need for the IELTS certificate before migrating, I would still want to take the test. Absolutely, Kashita. It's a very good point. Absolutely. Um, I'm not on the same page here. What is the IELTS exam? The IELTS exam is the International English Language Test. It means that it's a very large organization uh, and that organization have prepared a test for um, non-native English speakers to take to prove their proficiency in the English language. It's a certificate that you can get and you can use that certificate to prove your level of English to be able to study or work or sometimes even live abroad in an English speaking country. So we have 
International mobility, kind of what Kashita was talking about, right? If you're a non-native English speaker, but you are interested in traveling, right? Moving from place to place around the world, then having the IELTS certificate is very good for this. It kind of like opens the doors to many opportunities. Also, as we mentioned, university admission for English speaking countries. Visa and immigration requirements for countries like the UK and Canada. So like I said, if you're interested in living in an English speaking country, maybe even aside from studying or trying to find a job, you sometimes have to have uh, the IELTS certificate for work and career opportunities, certification for language proficiency. So like I said, just to prove your proficiency, you know, you could turn around to somebody and say, hey, I am proficient in the English language. Okay. They might be like, oh yeah, I'm sure you are. But you could be like, uh, yeah, I have the certificate that says so. Okay. Global recognition, IELTS, the IELTS exam, the IELTS uh, certificate is recognized worldwide. And then People like to take the IELTS exam just to improve their real life communication skills and just for self-improvement, okay? So all of these reasons are excellent reasons as to why people choose to take the IELTS exam. So what is the format of the IELTS speaking exam? So I'm going to give you a few minutes to share with the class. <laughs> What are the format? What is the format of the of the speaking exam? What's the format? How many parts are there? What do you have to do in each part? How long do you have to speak? ETC. I'll show you. Okay, three parts. Ashley Shen, briefly introduce yourself. Absolutely. Be polite and, you know, communicate with the examiner like they are a real human being because they are. <laughs> Nita, we're just specifically talking about this speaking exam. Okay. What is the format of the IELTS speaking exam? Only speaking, ladies and gentlemen. St. Jean, I don't often speak to my neighbours, maybe five times since I got here. I usually spend the evening at the gym. And what kind of neighbourhood do you live in, St. Jean? Do you live in like a big city or, or a smaller city? town. Okay, so here I've given you three pictures, basically trying to, to show you a little snippet of what each part is. So part one is often known as the icebreaker. Okay, this is the, the start of the speaking exam. This is where you have the opportunity to talk about very familiar a very familiar topic which is yourself okay and sometimes in the ESSEL world we consider these types of activities as ice breakers which is why I have put a picture of some ice here so part one is an introduction and interview 
basic, straightforward questions about you and your life. And this part can go on for about four to five minutes. Then part two is an individual long turn. So you are given a cue card with something that you have to discuss and then you have props and you have one minute for preparation and then like three minutes to speak about that topic. It is quite difficult. Um, Domenico, the examiner, who was a woman, was really friendly and she had to interrupt me in part two. <laughs> Domenico, I'm not surprised. That's something that we worked on a lot together. Um, I know it's because you, you obviously want to give as much detail as possible. Um, so it's completely normal to go over the time limit in part two extremely common. Part three is a two-way discussion, kind of. I mean, the examiner asks you additional questions related to the topic from part two. Um, and that can go on for four to five minutes, depending on how happy the examiner is with the information you've given them. So that's the structure of the speaking exam. You have three parts, okay? They follow on one from the other, part one, part two, and part three. Part one, quite simple. Part three, also, if you are familiar with the topic, but part two can be a little more tricky. So, what do they score you on? What are you tested on? Well, it's quite simple. You are tested on four different criteria. First of all, fluency and coherence. What does that mean? What does fluency and coherence mean? Does anybody know? Yes, Petrisor, Petrisor, could you elaborate for us, please? Very good. Yes, amazing. So well done, Petrisor, and well done, the Thomas Maria. So fluency and coherence basically means how you express your ideas, how logical your ideas are, and how kind of easy it is for the examiner to, to follow your ideas. So the next thing you'll be tested on, well, you know, the other, another criteria, lexical resource. What does lexical resource mean? Oh, okay, St. Jean. Send our love to your sister. That's really cute. We won't talk about you, I promise. <laughs> no, I'm joking. We won't talk about you. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, so lexical resource The Thomas Maria and Sarah, you are both correct. Exactly. Lexical resource is just a fancy way of saying a range of vocabulary. Okay. Then the next criteria, pronunciation. Well, we all know what that means. Okay. How correctly you pronounce um, the English language. Um, and also kind of thinking about certain aspects of English pronunciation, including word stress, intonation, all of those lovely things. And the last one, grammatical range and accuracy. Again, 
that's pretty simple to understand. What different grammatical structures are you using? Yes, the Thomas Maria, absolutely. Uh, grammatical variety of grammar structures and then how accurately you are able to use them. So what common challenges do you think students have in the IELTS speaking exam? Yes, Nadim, absolutely. So when thinking about taking the exam, or if you have already taken the IELTS exam, what challenges did you face or what challenges do you think students um, have in regards to um, taking the exam? Yes, absolutely, the Thomas Maria. Having enough knowledge on all of the topics that could come up in the IELTS exam because it's obviously incredibly broad. Phobias, okay, yes, a lot of people have anxiety and uh, nerves when it comes to taking exams. Teba, not keeping eye contact and maybe having, mm, and maybe, yeah, demonstrating unusual body language. <sighs> Nafar, stuck whilst in the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you are, mm, you know, in the middle of your uh, turn and maybe you become lost. That happens a lot. Fluency and grammar, nervousness, panicking. Um, using vocabulary and complex grammar at the same time. Absolutely. Julia, you have the complex about the exam preparation. What do you mean, Julia? Jack, how flexible and fluent you can say the right words, express your opinion. Absolutely. It's a stressful situation, especially for a non-native speaker. Yep. Yes, going off topic, Nipa. Absolutely. Organizing your ideas. Great. Well done. So I jotted some word, uh, ideas down. Redundant words. Ashley Shen. Very good. So nervousness and anxiety, struggling to provide knowledge of complex structures, difficulty with time management, Domenico, specifically part two, um, lack of practical skills, a lack of range of vocabulary for different topics, distraction, no clear organization, and overusing expressions and idioms. So these are some common challenges that students face when preparing the IELTS exam. So what can you do to prevent those things from happening? So here are some tips and exercises for you to practice. I'm just gonna go through these very quickly. Practice daily with sample questions. This is what I meant by not having any practical skills. You can read, on a number of topics. You can get vocabulary, expressions and phrases and jot them down into your notebook. But unless you're practicing them every day, it's not going to benefit you in any way, okay? Reading skills are very different to speaking skills. You need to be speaking English every single day. So what I would recommend is to focus on one vocabulary topic per week or one IELTS topic per week and then practice that vocabulary using different language areas. So pronunciation, including words, stress and intonation, looking for and researching expressions and fixed phrases related to the topic. Now, I say this every single time and I will continue saying this until I am no longer on this earth. Record yourself while you are doing speaking practice. 
any device that you have. If you have your mobile phone, if you have your laptop, if you have, um, I don't know, a voice recorder, anything, a camera, I don't know. Use any device and record yourself doing exam parts. Then you will be able to evaluate your performance using those four criteria. This is a self-assessment. You have to do this, okay? And then try the same part again. So don't just do it once and then forget about it. You need to keep practicing over and over again, using your notes to improve. Also, if it's possible, obviously practicing with an IELTS preparation teacher or even an IELTS student who is also preparing for the exam and ask them, okay, seek detailed feedback for areas of improvement. What else can you do? You need to expand your expressions and vocabulary. This is very important for IELTS. You need to be able to show them a range of vocabulary and understanding of that vocabulary. So focus on learning synonyms, atonyms and idiomatic expressions. You could definitely watch TV series and films that you are familiar with. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second here. The teacher has made a mistake. Um, be sure to watch um, films, or TV series that you're familiar with in your native language, but watch them in English and then note down any interesting words or phrases that you hear. Practice time management. Always test yourself under timed conditions when doing exam practice. Also avoid speaking too quickly and also avoid speaking too slowly as both can affect your score. And then part three requires you to think on your feet. Okay, this is question, answer, question, answer. So make sure you practice this with some quick fire question exercises. And sign up for as many mock tests, practice tests as you can. Because being comfortable in the test environment is almost as important as preparing for the exam. So those are my tips. So let's get into part one of the exam. So like we said, part one can last for four to five minutes. It's a one-to-one -one conversation, question, answer, question, answer between you, the test taker and the examiner. Um, the examiner will ask you a series of questions uh, based on basic information. In part one, the questions will be related to general topics that you should be able to answer, including talking about your home, your family, your studies, your hobbies and your interests. Why do you have to do this part? Well, it's it's there to be able to assess your ability to provide simple responses and engage in a conversation that you would have to do in English if you wanted to live, work, study in an English speaking country. So the part, the questions in part one are typically straightforward, very simple. So you should aim to provide concise answers while expanding your responses where relevant. So maybe you live on the coast of a very beautiful Mediterranean island. So you would have to go into a bit more detail, definitely using description to help the examiner be able to visually imagine. The um, place. So I am not going to give you examples of speaking part one because I know that there are plenty of people in the chat that have experience with um, part one. So I would like those people to, oh, no, 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 no. I would like those people 
to give us some examples. I did not think this through. I did not think this through. Okay, I'm just going to put myself over here. Okay, can anybody give me some examples of speaking part one? Speaking part one questions. So I can add them to my PPT. Do you work or study? Thank you, Domenico. Do you work or study? Great. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor ice cream? You are so beautiful. Oh, thank you, Ashri. You are so beautiful. No, I'm joking. <laughs> the examiner would get fired if they did that. Um, where is your hometown? Where do you live? Where is your hometown slash where do you live? Yes. Where are you from? Do you like your hometown? slash do you like it blah 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 very good what are your hobbies do you like shopping oh what is your favorite Past time activity. Carrie, do you like jogging? Absolutely. Do you like jogging? Okay, one more. Nadim, what's your favorite color and why? So, if you have not seen IELTS Speaking Part 1 before, as you can see, these questions are very basic, straightforward. We're not trying to um, deliver a speech about anything here, right? So, this is what I meant in my previous slide, that you should be trying to give concise answers and then also oh, I've messed everything up oh god and also giving examples and reasons my floating head is in the way okay I can't put it there either so now let's have a look at some adaptable phrases that you can use based on these topics, these questions. And um, if you learn them and if you practice them, then yeah, it should help. Phrases. I tend to lean towards activity with ING. I enjoy both, but if I had to choose, I'd and then choose one. I enjoy both. No, the reason I'm fond of, the reason I like, the reason I'm fond of an activity or a place or a person is that it or they or he or she allows me to. Furthermore, adding an extra point, I should mention that dot dot dot. Another thing to note is dot dot dot. Additionally, I like to add that dot dot dot. One thing I found interesting about and then a topic or an activity or a famous person, a film, a book was dot dot dot. Putting an activity within its ing form 
okay? So for example, uh, I don't know, surfing, sightseeing, traveling has always been a, da 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 da, has always been a pleasurable activity for me because, and then I regularly engage in, da da da. So those are the phrases that you can easily adapt for any of these simple part one questions. So let's move on to part two, because this is obviously the one that people struggle with the most. So I would like to spend more time on this part. Like I said, at the end of the class, be sure to download the PPT. You can also download it as a PDF file, I think, um, to be able to go through these notes again, okay? So what does P part two um, require? What are the expectations? So it involves speaking for one to two minutes on a given topic. You will receive a cue card with the topic and the prompts. You will have one extra minute to prepare your response during which you can take notes on the cue card. This is so important. Take notes, take effective notes. After the one minute presentation, you will then be asked to speak for one to two minutes, maybe a little bit longer uh, without any interruption, unless you go over the time and then the examiner will ask you to stop. Your response should be well structured and organized Oh, yeah, you you should aim to address all of the points or prompts provided on the cue card. If you don't answer all of the points, then your answer will be deemed as incomplete. Um, like I said, it should be well structured and organized with a clear introduction, including the main points and then trying to conclude if you have time. The examiner will assess your ability to maintain fluent and coherent for the extended period of time, which means that you are kind of tested on your ability to express your ideas, provide detailed information, and also obviously vocabulary and grammar. So here we have three examples. This is what part two would look like. <clears throat> So you would have the main topic. Describe a place you have visited recently, for example. Describe a place you have visited recently. Where did you go? What did you do there? And how did you feel about the visit? Or cue card two, describe a memorable event in your life. When and where did it happen? Who was involved? and explain why it was memorable for you. And then cue card three, describe your favorite book or film. What is the title and the author or the director? When did you first encounter it? And what is it, why is it your favorite and what impact has it had on you? So usually the last question is the question where you really have to give an extensive answer with reasons and examples, etc. So this is what you could expect. Okay. This is what you can expect for part two. So here I have a list of phrases that you can use for speaking part two and speaking part three. And as you can see, these uh, phrases are categorized into the different kind of parts of the speaking monologue to help you organize your ideas. So you have beginning your response, providing an overview, adding details, giving examples, explaining why, concluding your response. So these phrases are not only phrases to help you boost your scores because they are demonstrating different grammar structures but also they are here to help you avoid repetition 
okay? You don't want to re be repeating the same phrases and the same expressions over and over again. You need to use a mix. So without further ado, I would like you to choose one of these questions, cue card one, two or three. And I would like you to practice now taking notes. Okay, remember in IELTS, you have one minute preparation. You have one minute to take notes based on one of these topics. In the exam, you wouldn't get a choice. I've just given you three examples today. In the exam, you will only have one. So I would like you to choose which one you would like to try. And I would like you to share your answers in the chat, chat box for me. Okay. So choose one and then let's see what ideas you have. Janya, I would like to say you will be a super mum. Are you talking to me, Sarah Jana? <laughs> now don't put thoughts into my head. <laughs> the Thomas Marie ah the Thomas Maria I've got a question if I may in cue card 2 is there a choice of whether the event in our life is a positive or one or a bad one um I mean often I mean, it's always good to speak positively about something. I mean, there isn't anywhere that says that you can't speak about a negative experience. If it's memorable, if it affected you in your life, then of course um, it's acceptable. I would just make sure that you're able to express yourself well and you have the right vocabulary to describe a difficult situation. That's what I would say. Yes, Manuel, that's also a very important point. You should not try to memorize any of your answers. In fact, you know, for the ALTS exam, apart from speaking part one, but even then, you know, it's quite tricky. Um, it's very difficult to memorize answers. But these are adaptable phrases. So you would be able to use these phrases based on any kind of topic. So don't memorize long answers for specific questions, but definitely try to memorize different phrases and paraphrases to express your ideas. That means you're avoiding repetition. Nafar. I went to, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. <clears throat> Larry, Laro, Laro, with my kids. I visited Minar in Pakistan and the holy shrine of Data Ali Hujveri, who was the sea of spirituality. I got spiritual feelings there. Wow. I love that. To kick things off, I'd like to start by the prominent and famous pagodas in the northern part of Myanmar that I have visited recently. Fantastic, Julia. I'd like to start um, by... I'd like to kick things off. I'd like to start by... Mm, 
talking about the prominent and famous Pagnos. Hello, who's up? Thank you, Erica. That means so much to me. Bagan Bagod Pagodas are known for the historical and ancient one built 2,000 years ago, along with the quaint, essential, and scenic views. Whoever is sending me lots of love hearts, thank you very much. I love that. Very good. Would anybody else like to share their answers? It was nominated as one of the International World Heritage a few years back. I'll just give you maybe two more minutes to share your answers and then we're going to move on to quickly look at part three. Well, a movie I've been really into lately is Interstellar, which I stumbled upon after watching a documentary on astronomy a few months back. Very good, Domenico. But remember, do not repeat your pronoun. So which would be interstellar? So uh, admit it, which I stumbled upon after watching a documentary. Okay. But why am I correcting you? You've already taken the exam. <laughs> Kashita, I visited Oh, I can't pronounce these words. I'm absolutely terrible at pronouncing foreign words. I visited Al Janoub Stadium here in Qatar. Wow. First and foremost, I have never attended any football match, so I was very excited. There was a match between Qatar and Russia. Wow. Manuel, my classes are not like jails. Thank you very much. One more minute. And just to say, I hope you're all having a wonderful Tuesday. I hope the weather is nice. I hope you have nice plans for today. Nadim, well, I go to the nearest place daily because there is pollution free area, different types of flowers and water. It's so clean that it gives me a peeling every time when I get miffed. <laughs> Nadim, are you talking to, are you, are you talking about a park? Kashita, I ran out of words to put it all in one chat. Yes, I know Kashita, that's the frustrating thing about um, YouTube chat. Especially during live chats. The Thomas Marie, one thing that's going to be forever in my mind is the birth of my nephew a few years back. Oh, that's lovely. Nafar, to sum up, I'm really impressed by you, dear teacher Carrie. Thank you, Nafar. I'm glad you're not angry with me anymore. Yes, Henriquez. Uh, wait, is that a Spanish name? Should I be pronouncing the H? Enriquez, you'll be able to download the lesson materials about five minutes after the class. 
So if you go back to the YouTube video, there will be a link in the description box where you can download this PPT. Okay, don't worry. Domenico, what struck me about this film is not just its stunning visual effects and space exploration theme, but the deep emotional connections between the characters. Beautiful, Domenico. Julia, I'll begin with a brief overview of Forrest Gump. The reason behind this is it was portrayed... The reason behind this is it portrayed the human beings uplifting spirits and I was completely intrigued and memorized by its storyline and plot. The Thomas Maria, it was winter time in the day after Christmas and we were all gathered in my parents house. We were having fun and enjoying ourselves when suddenly my sister-in-law started getting a bit pale. Oh my god. The Thomas Maria, is this a true story? The story revolves around a near future Earth facing an environmental catastrophe, which resonates with our current concerns about the environment. The film's portrayal of a desperate mission through a wormhole to find a new habitat planet is both thrilling and thought provoking. No spoilers, Domenico. I still haven't watched Interstellar. I still haven't watched it. The Thomas Maria, it's a true story. <gasps> she started experiencing extreme pain. Oh my gosh. We rushed her to the hospital where the doctor said she was actually in labor a month earlier. Oh, a month before. Okay. Domenico, it delves into complex scientific concepts like time dilation, black holes, and the theory of relativity in a way that's accessible, engaging, even for someone without. A strong science background like me. But what truly makes Interstellar stand out for me is the powerful portrayal of human relationships. The bond between the main character Cooper and his daughter Murph is at the heart of the story. The Thomas Maria. After four hours, the doctor came out to announce that a beautiful baby boy will be joining our family soon. Oh, that's so lovely. Amazing. Hello, World May Office. I do know Cambodia. I've never been, but... Okay, so let's move on to part three. Um, part three follows the topic on from part two and can last for about four to five minutes. It's also a one-to-one -one conversation between the student and the examiner. In part three, you will be asked a series of more abstract and complex questions related to that topic. So the examiner may ask follow-up questions to probe your opinions, provide examples, or explore the topic in greater depth. Part three, the questions are designed to evaluate your ability to gauge in more extended and complex discussions on various aspects of the topic. The questions are the questions offer you often require you to express opinions, provide justifications and discuss broader implications. So your aim is to speak coherently, fluently, at length, offer detail and well structured responses. And it also assesses your ability to analyze, evaluate and discuss abstract ideas and issues rather than just providing basic information. Okay, so here are four 
example questions for speaking part three that are related to the cue cards that we have just looked at from speaking part two. So we have <laughs> What impact do you think visiting new places has on a person's perspective? How does travel contribute to cultural understanding and appreciation? Can you share your thoughts on the benefits of exploring places with rich historical significance? In what ways can travel promote personal growth and development? How do memorable events shape a person's identity and outlook on life? Can you discuss the role of personal milestone in a, personal, in a person's life? What makes an event memorable? And how do people preserve these memories? In your opinion, how do significant life effect, events affect one's relationships with others? How can books and movies influence people's thinkings, thinking and values? What are the reasons people have different preferences for books and movies? Could you share your thoughts on how storytelling impacts our culture and society? And in your view, what role do books and movies play in education and personal development? Welcome back, St. John. How are you? I can imagine the Thomas Maria. That's a beautiful story. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad that you enjoyed the class. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Um, so Domenico, yes, I'm definitely going to have to watch that film ASAP, probably this weekend now to avoid any more spoilers from you. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, these questions for speaking part three are much more objective. The examiner is not necessarily asking you for your own personal experiences, okay? The examiner is not asking you to talk more about what you discussed in task two, but it's still similar to the topic. However, the questions are much more... Uh, I can't think of a word. They're much more <laughs> the questions expect you to be able to give extended answers and to think about the topic from a range of different points of view. Hey, thanks for this wonderful channel from which I've learned a lot. I'm from Iraq. That's great. Manuel. I deny to do a speaking exam talking about climate change. I can't stand this task teacher. <gasps> Were I to know, you would ask me it again. I had not attended the exam. <gasps> Daisy, a personal perspective will be impacted tremendously when visiting a new place because being exposed to a new culture and a new language will trigger their curiosity, broadening their horizon. Beautiful answer to the question, Daisy. Fantastic. Domenico, Carrie, do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the night. Light. Domenico, are you reading poetry to me? What's going on? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Frankly speaking, I'm easily picked up the new sense and sensitive emotional individual that I am moved whenever I feel a pang of regret or a poignant reminder of my childhood trauma. Okay, so Julia, this is related to Topic two. Um, Julia, 
perhaps that would be good to mention in task two, part two, but just remember that part three, task three, is talking more about people in general rather than focusing on yourself, okay? After returning from a month, a month trip from America, I became more open-minded about absorbing new ideas. Great. You're welcome, Julia. Domenico, you will hear these few lines of this poem when you watch the movie. <gasps> Stop spoiling me. Stop it. I don't want to hear any more. Right, I'm going to go because Domenico is spoiling the film for me. Um, so, if you didn't know, I'll be back next week. Same time, same place. Maybe not the same time, but definitely same place. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a class. I don't know. But I will be here next Tuesday, either 12 o'clock UK time or 1 o'clock UK time to go through British English part two. So we are going to dive in to mm, more British English pronunciation, more British English expressions and idioms. Um, that's going to be our content for next week. So thank you so much for joining me today. I have had a, a really good time with you guys as always. Kashita has one question you may ask me. I'm going to wait for Kashita to ask me the question, but I'm not going to wait too long just in case he's already left. <laughs> okay, when doing an English exam and just using simple answers, don't hit the pass mark. Why would you fail? So, it depends on the exam and it depends on the type of exam we're talking about. So, I suppose you're just talking about speaking. So, in the IELTS exam, you don't fail, but usually you are aiming for a particular band and the bands are from 0 to 10, 10 being proficient and 0 being having no level of English. So you wouldn't necessarily fail. However, if you are looking to reach a high band level, 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5 and above, then that's where simple answers won't cut it because you would not be able to demonstrate use of complex grammar and a range of vocabulary. So I don't think it's the only way of failing a speaking exam would be not being able to speak, right? So sitting yourself in front of the examiner and not being able to express your opinions. However, getting those higher marks, when we're talking about IELTS, like I said, band 6.57 and above, and then also trying to pass Cambridge exams such as the B2C1C2, simple answers yeah they won't be enough okay so i hope that answered your question so you can't get the certificate if you don't score no you can get the certificate kashita but the certificate is based on the band that you get so if you get a lower band like band one two three and four then that shows that you have a, a lower level of English, like an, an A1, A2 level. So you still get the IELTS certificate, but for example, if you wanted to live in the United Kingdom and you wanted to work in public services, they would probably ask you for a band eight, nine or 10. 
So you you would present them with your certificate with IELTS level band six, and they'd say, well, you know, good try, but we need a higher level of English than that. If that makes sense. So you will always receive your IELTS certificate after doing the exam. It will say what band you have, zero through to 10, and then that will show, demonstrate your level. But certain companies, universities, countries ask for a specific number, if that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Right then. Well, I'm going. I'm starving. I haven't had any food today. It's like 20 past two in the afternoon. What's wrong with me? Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. It has been a pleasure, like I said before. Um, I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your week. Be safe, but also maybe do something outside of your comfort zone. That would be cool. Um, I'd love to hear all about it next week. So I hope that you join me. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. And goodbye.